I recall listening to a conversation. I cannot remember who was part of the conversation, but I do remember what they discussed. Happiness, or more specifically, how we measure happiness. One of the individuals talked about how hard it is to ask someone whether or not they are happy in a given moment. We might feel happy one moment, only for our mood to change upon opening a bill and finding extra fees added for the month. Because of the fleeting nature of happiness in any moment, happiness must be a larger question. The individual proposed that instead of asking someone if they are happy right now, to ask, how do you feel about the direction of your life in the days ahead? Those that are more content with the future or even more hopeful about the future tend to be happier now in the moment. Thus, the person suggests that a good way to measure happiness is not to ask someone how they feel right now, but rather ask them how they feel about the future. It reminds me of a story often told by Leslie Newbigin. Newbigin was a missionary and a theologian, a British man. He spent much of his ministry in South India during the 20th century. As his renown and authority grew, Newbigin found himself often hosting visitors from around the world when they came to India. Newbigin was frequently asked the question, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of the church in India? In other words, how do you feel about the future? Because this was such a frequent question, Newbigin developed a standard reply. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and therefore the question doesn't arise. For Newbigin, the finality of Jesus overcoming death, the certainty of Jesus conquering evil, the assuredness that Jesus would come to restore all that had been touched and tainted by sin, this allowed Newbegin a hopefulness that went beyond optimism. Optimism would have been rooted in the data. Are the churches growing in numbers? Are the members giving more generously? Is the church becoming larger and larger? Not that Newbegin completely ignored these questions, but for him they were secondary, and thus they did not impact how he felt about the future. Newbegin was confident about the future of the church in South India, not because of his intellectual genius or faithfulness and commitment to ministry, and not because there was an openness for the people to respond to the gospel, but because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That gives us hope. That grounds our hope. That is the very content and essence of our hope as Christians. In the lead up to the November elections in 2020, it was common to hear a question posed like this. How do you feel about the future of our country? As Democrats or as Republicans, we might answer in a variety of ways. But what I didn't hear in response, not even from many Christians, was a hope rooted in something else something sturdier, something beyond what we could observe and taste and see and experience. No one said, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and therefore the question does not arise. This confident hope in a certain future for us and for the world ought to give us hope in the present, regardless of our circumstances. It should fill us with peace, even when the ebb of life is going against us, and it should save us from despair, because we know how the story ends. We are just waiting for the author of life to turn the page. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.